In this video, we will start a new series of six videos, all dealing with passwords. First, we'll deal with how passwords work, how secure is your password, then how to select a password, password examples, two-factor authentication, followed by password managers and whether you actually need them. So in this, the first of the series, we are going to delve into the question of how do passwords work? And I honestly believe it is a necessary first step in understanding passwords to start you on the road to having a more secure, reliable, and safe internet experience. Because let's face it, we are all worried about being hacked. When you get onto a website and you go to log in, you get the username password prompt or email address and password, which is basically the same thing. When you signed up for an account on that website, the password that you created was stored on that website's server. The password was stored in one of three different ways. Either it's plain text, it was encrypted, or it was hashed. Plain text is self-explanatory. You basically type a password and it gets stored as exactly that, so anybody could gain access to it if they've got access to that website's server. So not an ideal solution, and yes, there are sites that still do this. Even though there's been so much hacking going on, they should have learned by now, and hopefully one day they will. But next up was encryption. The most commonly used type of encryption, which a lot of websites are still using, is AES-256. AES is an acronym for Advanced Encryption Standard, and it is, it is extremely, extremely secure. And as far as I'm aware, AES-256 has yet to be cracked. That's how secure it is. But it is a symmetric key encryption cipher, which basically means that when they encrypt your password with AES-256, they put a key on it, and you have a key on your side, and the same key is used on the server side. So basically the same key to encrypt and to decrypt the data. This is an inherent vulnerability in symmetrical encryption because attackers who gain access to leaked portions of the key may be able to reconstruct it. A symmetrical encryption algorithm may also become exhausted by excessive key leaking and have to be discarded. And what's worse is that keys can be compromised if hackers break into the system so encryption is not an ideal for website authentication. It is good for computers, don't get me wrong, because of how good the encryption method is. So what do you do? Welcome to hashes. The third in this line is a hashing function converts your password into a hash. This can be MD5, which is message digest algorithm introduced in 1991 and is 32 decimal characters long, or 128-bit. SHA-1 was 160-bit, or 40 decimal characters, which came out around 1995. SHA-256 is 64 decimal characters. SHA-384 is 96 characters. And SHA-512 is 128 decimal characters, but isn't used as much because of how much overhead it is needed. So. When you log in, your password is converted to a hash. And the account that was created, that hash in the database, is then taken out of the database and compared to the one that you just logged in with. If the generated hash and the stored hash match, you're granted access to the account. If they don't match, you get your typical login error. Now, what's great about hashing is it's a one-way task. So basically, when you convert the hash, your password to a hash, you cannot take that hash and convert it back to the password, which is good, but, yes, there's always a but. You can have hashing tables, or what's commonly known as rainbow tables, which is a pre-computed table for reversing cryptographic hash functions. Because if you have a password, say of password, anybody else who uses the same password has the same hash. That's how hashing works. That's why it's imperative that you choose good passwords, which we'll deal with in a future video. So MD5 is definitely no longer used because dictionary attacks just, it broke most of what MD5 encrypted or hashed. Brute force attacks, where they try every possible combination against the characters, also broke a lot of the hashing from MD5. 
So that shouldn't be used, unfortunately, again, just like text. Some websites still use it because they're too lazy to change it. So what do you do? Next comes two different functions which have certainly helped the web industry in securing websites. They consult a password, which basically adds, whether it adds your username or random characters, it adds those to the ha- uh, to the hashed password and then compiles it into a hash. So basically, no two users will ever have the same hash. So it basically removes the ability to use rainbow tables to break the passwords. There's also another method, also called peppering. Yes, we do have salt and pepper in computers as well. And basically, peppering adds a random letter to the end of the password before hashing it. And this can be A through Z lowercase or A through Z uppercase. So 52 possible variations. And it's completely random in terms of what letter it adds. The problem with this is that when you go to log in, in order to check your password and compare it against the hash, the server could potentially have to make 52 hashes to compare if it's a match because one letter difference will change the hash completely. So most definitely do not use peppering unless they really want security. And you can have salt and pepper in a password hash as well. Why is all of this so important? Or it's so important to understand what passwords are, how they're stored and whatnot. Well, when you're dealing with password entropy, which is the how complex your password is, and I'll deal with that particular topic in my next video, so part two of this series. Password entropy helps you create unique passwords and the hash derived from that password is also going to be unique. So rainbow tables cannot basically grab your password and know what your password is. And just to give you a couple of quick examples here, the biggest password breaking that I know about is the RockU password from about 2008, where over 14 million hashed passwords were actually cracked. And I'm gonna show you how this works. In Windows 11, it's great. My last topic I dealt with this great feature called Windows Terminal. So let's open it up on our screen here. And we're gonna start a new Ubuntu session. Once this loads here, I'm gonna show you how we can first check if we have what the hash value for a particular password is. So in Ubuntu, all you have to do is go echo minus N and then whatever password you wanna create. So this is, I'm just gonna create a password called password. And we're gonna, put this into SHA-256 and see what it generates for us. Now, if you note, that code right there or that hash value is the exact same one I've been dealing with throughout this whole video because I'm just using password as an example. So all my hash values are from password. If you want to create one that's uh, 512, SHA-512, you just change that there. And there we have the 512 version. Now, what I was talking about when you create a hashed value, say we use the previous example, SHA-256, and we just change one letter in the word, so just to password. You can see that the resulting hash value is completely, completely different, just with one single letter change. Now, here's where this is such an important thing. Rainbow tables are the only way hackers can get into these hashed values and determine what it is just by the simple nature that you cannot reverse engineer a hash value back into a password. But how do they do that? Well, I've got a a Ubuntu command here. It's called Hashcat. Hashcat has a really great interface in that you can force specific attacks or dictionary attacks, whether you want a brute force attack or whatever you do, against a particular list. And I just compiled a list of just four simple entries of hash values so that I can show you how this works. And it's called sample.hash. And I've also downloaded a, a default dictionary, which is just your standard dictionary. And I'll show you once this runs here. Now, my computer is really slow because this one I just use for YouTube videos. So there's nothing powerful about this computer. If we run this, Oops, I've got to force it. As I was saying, my computer is slow, so it's actually warning me it's going to really be slow. So I've got to actually force this command to run. So we put a dash dash force on the end there. Even with this, look how fast that just ran. And in my hash table, I actually did have a 30 or a smaller password just called password. And this is the hash value for that password. So it already grabbed one of the passwords. Now, 
using the same one, I've actually downloaded the rockyou.txt that I was mentioning, just to show you how this can work. Oh, before I go on that, if you noticed in here, it shows you how many passwords are actually in that dictionary.txt and how fast it was. So in this particular one, there's 466,000 entries in this dictionary. If you go online and you start checking your passwords, your password is going to be part of this dictionary at some point. If you have a look at this Rocky one here, let's run this. See, it's already found one right here where it found uppercase P, then the at symbol SSW, O, zero for a o R D, so it's already found that one as well. Um, this entry right here, removed one hash found in pot file, is if you previously run it, it stores it into a file called the pot file, which I can go in afterwards and view all the file or all the results of this particular hash. So because I've already run it, it's, it's ignored one because it's already in there. But have a look at this. In this particular rocku.txt, there are 14,344,384 passwords. And the more people compare their passwords online or saying, is my password secure? And they go and type it in. These lists are being compiled and this is what a rainbow table is. And this is a really small, easy computer. It's got no um, high-end video card, no nothing. And once you add high-end video cards, it can go through these in milliseconds. So you can have hash tape or rainbow tables in the billions of words and possible combinations, and it's going to crack it. And I'm not a hacker by any means, and this is very straightforward, and it's easy for me to figure this out. So do follow me on the next series of this video where I deal with those particular passwords. I'll have a look at um, if your current password is secure, how you can tell, how you can select a secure password, and I'll keep going down that line into the point of making sure that when you're online, you have some peace of mind because all of these things together can really scare somebody to no end because of how convoluted it is. And also because hackers are having a field day with people that just don't know. Anyway, folks, I really hope you found this video entertaining, informative. Please do give us a like if you did find it to be such. Uh, and above all, have yourselves a fantastic day. So until the next video, ciao for now.